we are excited. We want to follow the folk tales because Dr. Chingazalka has done that. It was five years and she wanted to read a collection of stories of folklore from around the world, every country, and she's done it. And we want to celebrate that. And also with us is Dr. Margaret Reed McDonald. And we will have a wonderful presentation about 30 minutes long and then about an hour of discussion. We really want to delve deep into that discussion. And when is this? This is going to be on Saturday, September 18th, 2021. And it is from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Mountain time. But don't worry, down there below, you'll see that web link, storycrossroads.org slash all things story, and there's a time zone converter. So it doesn't matter, morning, afternoon, evening, it will tell you what you need to know. But let's find out why we're so excited about this. So uh, Jenga, first, if you could share, and then Margaret, about why you're excited about this particular presentation. Well, I am super excited because uh, this project took me more than five years to complete, to read this, read a folktale collection from every country around the world. And it's been an amazing literary journey. It's been, it's been an amazing storytelling journey. And, uh, and I am excited to share that with everybody. And I am especially excited to see what all the questions are going to be and what people want to know about these stories. And then Margaret, what are you excited about? I'm excited about hearing what she's been reading, uh, the stories that she's really found that she loves, and interesting things she's discovered. Uh, it's it's fun for me to find someone who's been doing the same kind of work that I've been doing. Is you know, reading tons and tons and tons and tons of folk tales and looking for connections. So it should be exciting. Definitely. Now, I think it'd be helpful for everyone to understand your backgrounds, whether they already know you, or maybe there's a, a hint of things that never gets talked about in those paragraph bios. So tell us about why you love folk tales, folklore, stories around the world. So first we'll hear from Changa and then from Margaret. Well, I, I grew up in a living oral tradition uh, via my grandparents and my parents and, and folklore and telling folk tales give me a sense of, uh, of continuing a tradition and, and telling stories that have been told for hundreds or maybe thousands of years. And I love comparing that tradition that I grew up in to other folklore traditions around the world. And uh, that's why I, when I became a storyteller 15 years ago, I started telling professionally, I, I delved into the world of folk tales and I, I, I still tell most of the traditional stories. So, um, so that's my background in this. And, uh, and that's why I love hearing from, from other cultures and storytellers from other places and uh, compare notes. And I am a huge fan of Margaret. So uh, I am I'm happy to compare notes on these stories with her especially. <laughs> And tell us more, Margaret, about you beyond what sometimes are on those book jackets of yours, of all those collections of stories that you have. Well, essentially, I'm a children's librarian. And so my, my career was working with children telling stories to, to kids. But I had a, a, a bachelor's in, in anthropology from Indiana University. And I had discovered the folklore department while I was <laughs> working there. And I really always just was fascinated by that little tiny department. And I decided that I wanted to go back and, and get a PhD in, in folklore because I was telling stories in a really lively jumping about manner that wasn't appreciated in the library world then. You were supposed to stand quietly and hold your hands like this and not <laughs> move too much. And that wasn't me. So I thought, gee, if I get a PhD, I would have the authority to do what I wanted to do. And it actually worked. I, I got the PhD. I wrote the book, 20 Tellable Tales. And fortunately, it was reviewed well. And librarians accepted it. And it kind of changed the way you could tell stories in the public library. So and then, of course, what I loved was all the folk tales. And I decided to use Smith Thompson's Motif Index uh, as a basis and do a Motif Index for my PhD, which meant reading hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books and indexing them. Well, the word that thank you, you so much for that. <laughs> the word yeah. you before was tons. 
tons. You know, that means you don't have to define it. Just everybody believe us, tons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually, I don't know. It was, I wrote it down. It was uh, 556 collections and 389 picture books for the first, for the first one. Yeah. Well, this is glorious. And <laughs> If people it's don't, fun, right? me, if people don't, <laughs> me, they, they know that I love stories around the world. So the three of us, oh, I mean, just we could probably, if we added all the collections we read together, that would be really fun and fascinating right there. Yeah. And that's actually with Story Crossroads, even though we celebrate all kinds of genres of storytelling, we do lean more towards the multicultural and the folklore side of things. Uh, our first year we had 14 different languages on stage. So that's very important. Oh, I love us. that, I love that. Yeah. And uh, from the beginning, we've had American Sign Language and uh, we're gonna continue with that. Someday maybe 99 languages, but you know, that's another story. Right now, we're excited to follow the folk tales, and we want to do that with Dr. Changa Zalka. We are so glad to have Changa here as well as Margaret. And this is your chance to learn about what's out there and perhaps that great love that you have will just increase tenfold, hundredfolds because of enjoying the discussion. So please join us Saturday, September 18th, 2021. And that is 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Mountain Time. But again, that time zone converter and until we tell again. Thank you.